I started my YouTube channel way back in like 2007 before it was HD and I was primarily using it for um, you know sharing the movie footage that we were shooting you know keeping it unlisted and just sharing clips with my producers and stuff and so um, and I shot videos with my son and stuff like that but I never thought about actually trying to grow my channel for a long time and uh, now it's 2024 and I'm semi-retired I still plan on making movies I write my movies and uh, edit them so I don't have to rely on a lot of people I'm not trying to promote my channel and I'm looking at a lot of videos uh, to see what people are doing what they're suggesting about tags how to promote your movie and it's kind of kind of drives you nuts there's just so many people uh, talking about what you should do to get thousands of views and it can drive you crazy so every once in a while you got to take a break from that and just rely on your content and um, so a few years ago I, I, I as an editor I know it was about fast editing fast cut 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 you know shots uh, f sounds boom 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 and that's still interesting but I guess they're saying that uh, they want to just hear people talking like I'm doing now just talking to the camera keeping it slow taking a walk shaking the tree boss stuff like that and so I'll be doing videos on you know production management what I do I made a lot of extremely low budget movies when I say low budget movies there's one movie I did back in 2000, 2001. It was called Cop Zone. And, uh, you know, that we didn't even have a YouTube. Uh, but we had CineQuest. And so I shot uh, Cop Zone entirely at night over the course of a week. And um, we ended up getting it into the 2002 CineQuest Film Festival. And uh, back then, you didn't have projection from the... Uh, you know, video uh, projection from the booth. You had video projectors in the seats, uh, in the, right in the middle of people. So they've, we've, they've really come a long way. You know, we've done a few films. Whiskey Slide, we shot that movie for 2,500 bucks. Um, a lot of people came together, worked really hard, trying to make the, the movie work. We got our hands on uh, um, um, some really great uh, classic classic Model A's, Model T's. Uh, Jordy Protus did most of the uh, wrangling on the, uh, you know, trying to get the cars. We met a man named Don Scow, who um, I believe he was a member of the San Jose Ford Model T Club, something like that. And so Don really helped, um, you know, coordinating the cars with Jordy. Uh, a friend of ours, Shaughnessy McGee, he, he let us use his uh, vehicle as well. You know, when I started Almond in Films in 1997, um, I had already shot four feature films, you know, with, with Bottom Line Studios, Sean and Patrick Donahue. They, they shot, uh, you know, action films. And so I did a lot of production management work on those films. And, um, you know, great, great learning experience. So when I started Almond in Films, um, that I brought that uh, production management experience over with me and I was able to uh, you know shoot all the films that I did um, you know we did the cop zone and the unwilling and judgment call uh, whiskey slide uh, we just shot the ghost of Annie Lee and now I've written a new movie having that having production management experience is is the glue that holds every production together um, and a lot of people, I've met a lot of filmmakers that, uh, that, uh, you know, they kind of don't take it, take the, the, the coordinating and the scheduling, uh, very seriously. And then they run into, to problems later. And it's really not that difficult if, if you line things up ahead of time. Again, when you're on a low budget film and you're dealing with people who are, you know, uh, contributing their time. Um, you gotta, 
you got to take take advantage of that window of opportunity because when it closes it's closed and then you have to wait a while and then maybe you can come back but when that window closes people they scatter they 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 move on you know they do their own thing you know they get haircuts they work on other films so i've got a movie right now that i just wrote which i'm going to jump back into acting because the movie's about it's loosely based on what i'm going through in my life right now health wise and i wrote the i gave myself 2 years after we finished the ghost of annie lee which i worked 3 or 3 years on and countless setbacks i um i i as soon as i finished post production on the ghost of annie lee i immediately talking about a window of opportunity i immediately uh jumped on the first draft i gave myself 2 years to write this movie it's called um terminally grateful and uh I gave myself two years. I didn't care, and I wrote the first draft in um, uh, like six months. And now, now it's been sitting for about um, it's been sitting for about uh, about a month. A couple of friends have have read it. I've given some people the treatment. I'm waiting for my son. He just was working on his short film. He's going to help me with this, and so I want to listen to his ideas. But uh, so, anyway, there's the window of opportunity on the writing phase, and then there's the window of opportunity on the fundraising uh, phase, and then there's the window of opportunity on the production calendar. Once you get the movie in the can and it's locked. Uh, then you have a little bit of breathing room with with editing and i edit my own films right now so i don't have to rely on anybody and i could uh, start capturing footage right away i can stop and go do something else and then come back um cuz when you're editing that's when you really 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 get to take your time um you're not as rushed 